wind was blowing long and cold from the northeast. Had been blowing from that side for a month or more. Like a fern or a Santana. Made you feel uneasy. I'd been gone for 20 years, but I slipped in easily to the ambience whenever I returned from far away. I was at home in these parts. I knew every break and burren, lane and hollow in the country through which I passed. The sky was big, the mountains wind blown, and southward were glimpses of the sea. Here is where I hurled, bowled, rode horses, followed cattle. Here was the land I cherished. I stopped in the village where I went to school way out west in the shadow of the mountains, where someone might still know me, and time might have been turning somewhat slower. I pulled into the front of an old public house. I parked in the yard outside. It was a dark, dreary place with little snugs running off it. Garish banners and other bric-a-brac hung like a clothesline across the muddy brown ceiling. There was a big fire burning in a grate and a pop song playing on an invisible radio. It was about 12 noon on a cold spring day and the place was empty as a grave. But the fire was big and hot and cheerful, like a red giant in a deserted galaxy. Hello. Hello. Hardy weather? It is. What can I get you? A cup of coffee and a ham sandwich. A cup of coffee and a ham sandwich. That's it? That's it. Take a seat. The day for the fire short enough. There's no doubt about that. It wouldn't be a big effort to stay here for the day, right enough. That fire would tempt you. It's brass monkey weather, all right. They say that bloody wind blows straight across from Northern Europe, from Latvia or Moldova or one of those bloody places. And the first bit of high ground it hits is Nottingham, England. Fancy that. <laughs> Shall we hear the bait of it? Of course, if you look at a map, you won't see any mountains till the middle of England, the Apennines. What about the Urals? I don't know. They're from the east. The Apennines are the first. I think you may be thinking of the, the Pennines. The Apennines are in Italy. Christ. And there. Uh, it's quite enough around here. It is fate. I suppose everyone's out working. Well, the way I see it, there's still work there today for any fellow that's inclined to work. 
Are you from Dunmanway? No. I'm from here. A few miles west along. You don't sound it. <laughs> I've been away for 20 years. But I'm from here, all right. <laughs> Where are you from yourself? Uh, Terrell's inside. Would you be Crowley? Crinigan. Anything to the Crinigans on Tower Hill? Cousins. I'm from Shanawadra. Oh, Jesus, I know it well. <laughs> Many is the wild night I spent above on Shanawadra. There's the world wide of water up there. So there is the world wide of it. There can be. <laughs> Aye, of course, many the good night I had up there too, in Grady's place, and Dan Ribbons's. Uh, no shortage of a drop of the crater in them hoses. Or what? Whiskey and porter the finest. I knew all the characters Jerry above at home. Tipperary, John Barry, I knew them all. Many's the day I spent above on that hill, and nights too. I did fatten. And so did I. Days when the wind blew over Thades from Carron Hill, full of the warm south. Spring evenings when Charlie Jordan's lilting tenor floated up the eastern lane as he drove his cows to milking. It's now or never, come hold me tight. Kiss me, my darling, be mine tonight. Lazy sundown evenings as the crisp crack of a hurly ball echoed across the field from James's. And I up a tree like a sailor on a top gallant to see if Sean and Seamus were out to play. And my mother at the beehives. And my sisters romancing all along the blackberry roads in the fiery light, being chased by the boys of summer. Water is a devil. A pure whore if you don't know how to handle it. Huh? Hard to find it, hard to hold it. So that's what you are. A water diviner. Faith and I'm not. Devil a water diviner. Christ no by in. I'm a grantman. Oh. I'd never a guessed. Hard to know sometimes what a fellow is. Or what he's thinking for that matter. So you'll know these parts very well. Nera. <laughs> Kill Michael, Kanakilti, Raskabri, Skibreen. I know every boar here in West Cork. It is a grand old spot. Mm, Devil a grander. Aye, oh, it is the greatest country in the world. If only we had work to keep people at home. Things are not as good as they used to be. Mm, you can say that. Ah, but sure things were gone to hell. There was no sense to the kind of money that builders were getting. And bricklayers and plasterers. And two euro a block. My own young fella was out farden, and he came back. Your fella? Hey, son of mine. He was in Australia for three years, and things were good out there, but he came back. And he must have thought things were better than in Australia. By all accounts. Of course, by the time he got back, the boom was over. Of course, he was always a home bird. Although he liked to travel, he liked it better at home. I was the opposite. In my twenties, I spent three years in America. Never asked to come home. There you are. And the bloody fellow could turn his hand to anything. <laughs> no, brick laying, plaster and plumbing. No shortage of women either. You know what? Baiting him away, he'd be. He must be a good looking man. Ah, straight as a ramrod. The finest man in this part of the world. Ah. Aye, and another thing. A great man under a high ball. Ah, don't be talking. Ah. 
pull left and right. Ah, a grand hurler. Play anywhere. Midfield, full back, centre, half forward. He'd go through Ireland, he would. He's dead since too. Who's dead? My fella. Your son? He did away with himself about 12 months ago. Only 27 years of age. He used a shotgun. The bric a brac in the gloomy bar seemed to grow more grotesque. The dull boom of the trucks on the street outside was suddenly louder. The barman hovered within hearing like a ghost. My coffee tasted flat. I'm sorry to hear it. He seemed in grand form. Couldn't say there was a blasted bit the matter with him. It was the way he went out to the disco with the others, grand as you like. They were late coming back, the lot of them. And they had drink taken, of course, but nothing beyond the normal. Let ye go away, in, you see, to the others, to the brother and the two sisters, like. Let ye go away, in. I'll stay here. I'm not tired. I listen to the radio. They went the way in, and he sat there with the radio on. They thought nothing of it, went the way in. It was a fine midsummer's night, ah, clear, no wind. It was about two or three o'clock in the morning. The others were still up when they heard the car starting. And they heard it drive up the road a bit a couple of hundred yards. Then they heard it cut out. They wondered what was up. They waited a while. Then they heard the shot. They ran out and legged it up the road. The dawn was coming up. Cab was pulled in behind an abandoned garage, out of sight. And sure then they saw him. They opened the door and he was lying back, like he might be asleep. They found the cartridge. He shot himself on the side of the head. One cartridge. That was it. Eternity beat on as I listened, looking him in the eye. He looked calmly back at me. No emotion, very matter of fact, yet with an unutterable sadness. He liked telling me the story. It kept him in touch with his son, helped him see and hear him, feel his small body as he tossed him in the air as a small child, and the child's joyful chortle of laughter. It gave him comfort against the void. And he had another whiskey, and we continued to sit there by the fire. There's a lot of it about. It is catching, you understand? You believe so? Without a doubt. Kilcurry Bridge. 
That's the favourite spot. High above the River Lee. Like the Golden Gate? Huh? The very same, I tell you. There was a fella called Shorten jumped off there. And it was the way the poor bastard broke his neck from the fall. He didn't drown at all. It was the fall that killed him. Then there was young Buttermore from up near Kilimantra. Hanged himself inside in the hair barn. I knew him too. I did fit. He was only 25. We continued to talk for another half hour. He was an expert on the subject. Motivation, method, aftermath. And it gave him comfort to consider that in the galaxy of the vanquished, his own son's burnout was no lesser than other falling stars. And then I went outside to where the northeast wind blew grey across the dark farms, carrying the strong smell of slurry to the town. It had been blowing from that side for a month now. I drove down the single street of the little town, down Main Street. And Bruce Springsteen sang the ghost of Tom Joad on the CD player of my car. Songs of the wasted and tragic lives of young Hispanic workers in the fields of San Joaquin, way out in California. The smoke from the gleaming new wood pulp factory spewed constantly into the virgin sky. Grey smoke by day, white smoke by night. The little town was growing up, with all the plagues and pestilence that came hand in hand with the comforts of the modern way of life and death by misadventure. I headed slowly for the hill country. Up there I hoped I could still hold onto the summers of long ago, when I rode the carefree road like Dick Turpin on my strong, courageous chestnut mare. And I could see my old friend Charlie Jordan, with his dark-haired head thrown back, white teeth gleaming laughing, singing. Tomorrow will be too late. It's now or never. My love won't wait. Back to where we send the 
signals out to the men Did they make it on board with fire? 